Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for a community of professionals that are looking to share, learn, and grow where you can talk openly and freely about the highs and lows in your business? If so, I want to invite you to check out my inner circle at angelaprofit.com slash membership. Today's podcast is brought to you by Zola the wedding company that is reinventing the wedding planning website and registry experience. Join 500,000 couples who have used Zola. It completely takes the stress out of planning a wedding website and it's absolutely free. Y'all, it is so easy to use and you can create your free wedding website as well as register at their store and so much more. And it's conveniently managing everything online and in one place that saves you so much time for couples. You can create a free wedding website at Zola in just minutes and they have over a hundred beautiful wedding website designs to choose from that fit any couple style and every type of wedding that you can imagine. And it's free! Zola makes it easy to personalize your favorite design with all your wedding details. You can add photos and stories and how you two met, travel accommodations for your guests, and even recommend things to your guests while they're in town for the wedding. It really addresses those questions, the awkward questions, like to your guests, can I bring my kids? Do I have a plus one? That's probably my favorite thing about it. And Zola makes registering for newlywed life so easy. Their store has the widest selection of gifts at all different price points. And my favorite part is you can create a honeymoon fun and registry for travel gifts like Delta and even Southwest. They offer free shipping and returns, price matching, and so, so much more. To create your free wedding website on Zola, go to Zola.com slash Angela Profit. That is Z-O-L-A dot com slash Angela Profit, P-R-O-F-F-I-T-T dot com. Two F's and two T's. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Profit. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode on Weddings Unveiled. Today, I am talking with Carrie Wilds, owner and photographer of Carrie Wilds Photography. Carrie, thank you so much for being here today. Hey, everyone. Angela, thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited to be a part of your podcast. I'm excited to chat with you about your business and about the photography that you love doing. And just to get started to tell our audience a little bit about you, can you share with us your background? Sure. I kind of have a random background. I'm actually from Ohio originally, and throughout when I was a kid in high school and everything, I decided that I was going to become an engineer. And I did. <laughs> so I wow. actually, yeah, I know totally random. I actually went to Purdue University and got my bachelor's in industrial engineering. And then after college, I worked for a big healthcare company and had an amazing six year career in that field and got to travel the world and learn crazy amount about all different types of manufacturing and processes and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And I met my husband along the way when I was in New Orleans on a six month assignment. And so long story short, he is from Florida. And so he moved back to Chicago with me We got married up there and then he spent two winters in Illinois and it snowed on his birthday in April. And he's like, we are done with this place. (laughs) (laughs) So his stint in the Midwest lasted a very short time. And so 
we looked in all kind of some different warmer climates and I was always like, I don't want to move to Florida. You know, like I feel like, you know, that's just totally not me and all it is is trailer parks and whatever. And so we actually came to visit and loved Tampa and he ended up getting a job down here in Tampa. And so then shortly after I moved down and got a job in the engineering field as I was in before, but kind of along the way through all of my international travel, I had gotten into photography as well as all of my friends were getting married and I got married also. And I loved weddings and I just loved capturing people's stories. And so when we moved to Florida, I decided while I was working my full-time career to start my photography company. And then I set goals of what I had to have booked and saved and learned all about business. And I didn't know anybody here in Tampa and I didn't know anything about the wedding industry. And so I was like, maybe I'll be able to do this full-time in five years. Maybe I'll just do it as a hobby. But I was actually able to quit my engineering career the day after my one year anniversary at the company that I worked for because I hit all my goals and I was ready to go. And so it happened much quicker than I thought it would. <laughs> so, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So totally a crazy, you know, thing that happened because we moved to Florida and we've been here, it'll be 11 years this year. So this is my 10th year full time being a wedding photographer. And I honestly can't believe it's gone that quickly. And I really can't imagine doing anything else. So I know that you said that the first really like you got married and then your friends got married. And that was probably like your first introduction, like into the wedding industry. And so would you say like, that's really how you got started? And then it sounds like, I mean, like a lot of us just organically, like you started to find your path of, okay, I love this. I'm going to jump and like try this business thing. And so after that year that you're like, okay, I'm going to do this. Like, when did you officially say like, okay, I'm, I'm a business owner. Was that planned? Like when you left your career, when you were there for a year and you left? I basically, and I come from a business background. So for me, I love photography equally as much as I love business. So I thought of it as replacing an income with something that I love to do, but that also had to be a business and make an income. So kind of from the beginning, I saw it as, you know, if I'm going to do this and quit my job, it has to be profitable and it has to be something that number one, I love to do, but also that, you know, I'm working full time and it has to make sense with what I'm doing. And the thing that I, you know, I loved photography and figured out like I loved weddings as well. And the cool thing that I didn't know moving to Florida was we actually have two wedding seasons here and it's warm all year. So you can shoot year round And our wedding season here in Florida is actually more like March through June and then end of September through end of November. Whereas, you know, in the Midwest, the season, you know, is mostly around summer, which is a much more condensed time frame. Yeah. So it just worked out perfectly, you know, to be own a photography company and love weddings and to really focus on doing that. Also, just because the work really is year round and you could build it that way. That's amazing. I didn't even think of that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so do you do a lot of outdoor weddings and beach weddings? I mean, being in the area that you're in, those of us who aren't next to beaches and waters just assume that, but do you photograph a lot of outdoor beach weddings? We do. The Also, the nice thing about this area is I'm in Tampa, so we have a lot of waterfront with the bay in Tampa. A lot of times people think it's Tampa of Tampa as the beach where we're actually not the beach oh. is like Clearwater, St. Pete, that area. So like 40 minutes to an hour away from Tampa is actually, you know, those white sandy beaches that you think of. So we do shoot a lot of weddings at the beach as well as, you know, waterfront downtown Tampa. There's quite a few outdoor estates and farms here as well. So you really get a huge mix of all different types of locations, which I love because, you know, there's not like one, you know, it's not 
just a city type of setting or, you know, a specific type of thing. There's pretty much every single type of venue you can imagine. We have within about an hour radius of where I am. Would you say that you have a favorite place? Um, gosh, they're all so different. I feel like, I mean, I love, I love sunsets. We are on the West coast. So a lot of ceremonies and photos of the couple revolve around sunset, which we do a lot of planning. I have this app on my phone that I use probably five times a day (laughs) when that's awesome. Yeah. Like when talking with couples, like, you know, if their wedding is say November, whatever the first Saturday is November 3rd or something like that, that's always the Saturday, the time changes. So instead of the next weekend, instead of, you know, five, six 30, it's five 30 kind of thing. So I do love, I, I mean, the sunsets here are are really, really beautiful. Gosh, I really just love getting to know the couples and the story. And each one of the stories is so different. So for me, like that's much more important than the actual location itself. So it'd be really tough to pick. Gotcha. <laughs> a favorite. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. with you. Like people yeah. ask me that they're like, because we do a ton of destination stuff and they're like, well, what's your favorite resort or your favorite island or your fa-? And I'm like, God, I don't know. Like it really does. It has so much to do with the couple and the family and the personality. And especially when you're traveling with them and spending a week with them, sometimes it, I totally understand. Yeah. Yeah. I would say one of the coolest ones that I've ever done was I did get to photograph a wedding in Portugal. Ooh, cool. So- Yes. And it was a, the cathedral was, had, was, used to be a castle. So wow, my whole, my husband and my two kids went with, and they had an apartment for us and a car and we got to spend time with their family. And like literally every day as more people arrived, dinner got bigger and bigger. So it was really, really cool to experience that culture kind of as part of their family, as well as photograph a wedding in Europe. That was very cool. That's amazing. What would you say like is your special and your uniqueness about your service and like what you provide? What would you say is the most unique thing like about what you do? I think it's our whole approach to each couple's story and experience and then how we go about capturing it. So I actually also have two other lead photographers besides myself. So from the beginning, I've had a team of us all approaching, you know, the story and the couple and the moments in the same way. And our style, I like to call it timeless photo journalism. So What I think people really like is what they see in our images is, you know, emotion and the beauty and how it actually looked and not as much like people a lot of times don't think that we're directing or, you know, staging, not staging, but like people think that it's just kind of happened that way. And when we talk about how we photograph the entire day, you know, there's a lot of things that go into actually doing that. So we believe that each couple's story deserves to be remembered, both in the actual images taken themselves, but also the artwork that we provide after. So I would say that is something that's, that people really gravitate towards when they see it is our albums. And then we design custom wall art as well, because I feel like that's kind of a, a lost art, if yeah. you will, now, because a lot of times people are like, when they come to me, they hadn't even thought of, or they've been like, no, nah, we don't need an album, you know, whatever. And then when they see them in person, they're like, we have to have that. Like, that's, you know, what we're going to have to tell the story. And we custom design that with all of their favorite moments, people and details so that they have that to connect themselves with, you know, their kids and their grandkids. So it's a tangible physical art piece that connects you to future generations. So I think that's something that, that definitely sets us apart with what we do as well. Absolutely. I feel like there's so much around digital these days, which is great, but whenever I feel like just so much, whenever I go somewhere, okay. And there's like, you know, an album, like sitting out on someone's coffee table, like this happened to me the other day, a friend of mine turned 40. And so I went to the party and I literally knew no one there. 
<laughs> but I mean, I'll talk to the wall. But I saw their wedding album, the, the person that hosted the party at the house, and I went straight to it. And I could tell just by looking at the album, like I could see the love and feel the love. And it was just so neat. And But the, I could also tell like, oh, this was kind of a recent wedding, just the way that the pictures were processed, or I'm not sure what, what it's called. And just like the decor and things like that. And I think that people take that for granted. And I love the whole wall art approach because when you walk into your home, it's like you want people to feel comfortable. And if you don't have any family pictures up or anything on your wall, it's just kind of like blah, like, who are you? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So I love that. And I know that we were talking about this earlier, like there's so many different types of photographers and there's new photographers and people that have been doing it, you know, for 20 plus years in, in our industry. And again, I, I, again, the other day, oh my God, I was doing a wedding. This guy's like, my God, my cell phone is so amazing. Like, I think I could just be a wedding photographer. And I'm just like, oh dude, no, like you don't know what you don't know. Like, that's great that you're in love with your phone, but it like, doesn't work that way. Like not a good business. Stay in your band. (laughs) Like he was in the band. He was like the DJ or something. Oh yeah. But it's like, can you explain like from your your perspective, all the different types of photographers that are around like right now? Yeah, definitely. And I think, I think that's a really good point because when we initially do a consultation with our couples before they even book, one of the first questions I ask them is just a totally open-ended question about, you know, if they have anything they like style-wise related to photography that they either like or don't like, or if there's certain experiences that they've had, if they've been in other weddings or working with other photographers. And some people are really specific in terms of like, you know, they were in a wedding and the photographer didn't direct anybody or they saw their friend's photos and they were edited a specific way that they either liked or didn't like. I think it's, and it's something that I always explain Number one, exactly how we capture all the pieces of the story, but also the editing and how we're directing the photography as well, because I want to make sure that what we do matches what that couple wants to have. And it's not, I don't think, relatively easy information to get, you know, if you're just searching online or, you know, understanding what those actual photography terms are. So for us, I call our style timeless photojournalism because Throughout how we photograph the wedding, as well as the editing, I want the images to be timeless. So when you look back on it, I don't want, you know, the couple to say, oh, Instagram was popular 10 years ago when we got married and we have all these filters on our photos or or a specific, you know, type of look to them. Like I want people when they look back at their wedding images years and years later, I want them to be like, oh my gosh, that was an amazing moment with my grandfather. Or that's when I saw my husband for the first time, you know, before we got married. So for us, I want like the editing to be timeless. So, you know, it's very, we do edit everything, but it's going to be, you know, exactly how it looks beautifully shot in color. We're going to do some in black and white. And, you know, so I think, I think that's important to know there. There's, you know, what we do is like very natural and timeless. You know, there's some photographers that are, you know, their editing style is moody and kind of those darker tones, or they might be really saturated and kind of that artsy type of look. And then there's also terms around how a photographer is actually working on the day of with the people there, the couple and, you know, the wedding party and the guests and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, there's some photographers like what we do. It's, it's a lot of direction, but we make it fun and natural. So we're going to direct the photography part. So the couple's not going to have to say, you know, he, Oh, we should all go over here next and do photos in this spot because this looks cool, you know, or I'm just, I'm not going to just say, okay, guys, like do whatever you want. And I'm just going to photograph you because <laughs> yeah. people are going to be like, what do we do? You know, like I, what do I do with my, especially the guys, what do I do with my hands? Like, I don't know do. <laughs> so people usually come to us because they know that we're the experts of photograph, you know, directing the actual photography part so that it looks good. It looks natural and it's fun. But at the same time, you know, we're going to say, turn a little bit like this, move your hand here, you know, that kind of thing. So direction, some photographers direct people. Some people are more of what I would call like, you know, some people like to be like a fly on the wall and they're just kind of, they're just there 
capturing mm-hmm. everything as it unfolds, not necessarily giving direction or telling people where to be and how to stand and, you know, that kind of thing, which, you know, some people might love that. That's great. But I think that's something that's, that's really important to know. And especially when you're, you know, interviewing and talking to different photographers, you have to be aware of, of what you want, because, you know, if you're someone who wants a lot of direction and you want someone to take care of that photography part, but you hire someone who is more of that, like fly in the wall, um, you know, type of, photographer, that's really not going to work very well. (laughs) Right. So kind of that candid photojournalism, you know, some people are, it truly is that like, they're going to photograph things candidly as they happen. And then some people are going to do a mix of making sure that there's some direction in there so that you can anticipate those moments that are going to happen, you know, and that also means like, you know, if there's something in the background, that's not going to look good when you're doing first look, you're going to move it and, you know, do all these different things to kind of direct that photography part of the day. So different types of photography are both how you shoot it, as well as the editing and what the images look like after as well, which you can definitely see, you know, if you can look, if you look at a photographer's website or a full wedding gallery or something like that, you can definitely get an idea of what their editing style is also. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's funny. Cause I have brides that literally bring their Instagram yeah. <laughs> up in my office and they're like, so I found, you know, this, 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 and then typically it truly is like a photography page on Instagram. There's lots of different weddings on there, but it does. It all has that same look and feel like with filters. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm, I'm open to like whatever, but I mean, having been in this for over 16 years, it's like, you see so much change. Mm -hmm. And I just, I'm like, are you sure you're going to like that in 10 years? Because we do get some trendy people, but I would say most of our clients are really timeless and elegant. And, you know, I questioned them and they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. And I'm like, are you sure? (laughs) And is your, are your parents going to be okay with this? And you know, some of our clients, I don't know about you, but I feel like our clients nowadays are a little older. They're more established. It's like mom and dad don't come to all of the meetings. And so, but I definitely hear from them afterwards if they don't like the pictures. Mm -hmm. And um, so sometimes I just ask like, how is the family going to be involved afterwards? Because you know, that does look cool and all today, but it might not look cool in 10 years. So that's Mm -hmm. definitely a concern sometimes. Yeah. And I think, I think that's a good point because what, especially with albums and artwork and things like that, I tried to get people, cause you know, when you're planning a wedding, you're so busy, you're probably also working, you know, planning a wedding can be like a full-time job. You know, even if you have a planner, there's like so many things that you have to do. So I always try to get couples to think, of what they want after the wedding. So, you know, in 10 years, what do you want it? What do you want it to look like? And what are the things you wish you would have done? Like do those things now, because when it's 10 years later, you're just going to be able to say, if you don't do them, you're only going to be able to say, I wish I would have done that. So, you know, I think that's something education wise, that's good to kind of stop and think about for couples is to really, you know, look back and say, you know, try to stop and like put yourself in your shoes 10 years later, like, what do you really want that to look like? And you hope you don't want it to look different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, you've been doing this for a long time as well. Like from the time that you started to now, like what, what have you noticed has changed in the couples and like what they're wanting? I think, you know, I think I started 10 years ago. So I started a little bit after digital had taken off because I've been married 13 years and my wedding was actually shot in film because yeah, digital was just kind of starting at that point. And so when, by the time I got into it, you know, three years later or so it, you know, you could do all these editing things and like, there's all these different Photoshop actions that some of the big name photographers were selling and things like that. So I think back then, you know, it was cool and interesting and different because you could put like pink tones on photos, which you couldn't do before. So, um, it's definitely, I would say over the years kind of morphed and maybe it's just my style too, but it's for, for us and for what I'm seeing, 
people are kind of going back to that, you know, really elegant kind of timeless, you know, natural light, but different type of light sources as well, look to what they want. Um, and I think, I think also people, once they see what albums and artwork look like now, because they are way different than like when your parents got married and things like that, (laughs) I think if people can see it, they want it and they understand it. But if you, if they just go into it saying, Oh, I just want the digital files, you know, that, that is, has, I feel like gotten, I feel like that has gotten even worse over the years of people saying that that's what they want and focusing on that versus, you know, having some type of like professionally designed artwork kind of thing too. Do you even, do you take clients that, do you have people that call and say, I just want my digital files? Like, do you even entertain capturing their, their wedding if they ask for that? Well, I have one option with my associate teams because I have two different price ranges, whether I'm lead shooting or whether Miriam or Linda is lead shooting. So I do have a starting option with my associate teams that doesn't have an album. So essentially it is a digital uh, collection just because, you know, there are some people out there who they, for them, they're like, maybe we're going to add it later, but we want that experience and we want those beautifully shot images. So I have it, you know, for that purpose so that, you know, at least, you know, at a minimum, they have the digital files. All of my collections where I'm lead shooting do include an album or artwork credit um, with them just because, like I said, I want everyone, (laughs) I want everyone to have them. You know, another thing I, I was just thinking of that has changed quite a bit is with Pinterest in photography. Mm-hmm. Pinterest is, you know, kind of one of those like people in the wedding industry have a love hate relationship. Totally. With <laughs> <laughs> um, and I would say years ago when Pinterest came out, I don't even know how many years it's been around now. What seven, eight, maybe something like that. Six. Yeah. Years. I'll have to look it up. But um, you know, when Pinterest first came out, like couples were pulling stuff and like would show us their Pinterest boards in terms of the photography. And, you know, you have some of those crazy images like the, of T-Rex chasing the bridal party or like the groom's foot, the bride's foot, like stomping on the guy, you know, with this crazy yeah. stuff that people not realistic. Do. Yeah. Not realistic at all. And when you see it, you're like, Oh, I don't want to do that. Like, no, you know? So I feel like, I feel like I don't almost never have anybody who sends me a Pinterest board or, you know, says that they want these really specific images, which I'm happy, which for me, like I'm really happy about. And if someone does talk about that or bring it up, I actually wrote a blog posting on it like three or four years ago because I was running one day and that's kind of where I get all my good ideas while I'm running or I'm a (laughs) Um, And so I was running and thinking about Pinterest and like, gosh, why do people want to copy everybody's images? And what I wrote about my blog post was that Pinterest is great for physical things that you can see in terms of like florals or decor, wedding dresses, anything tangible like that. Yep. But what you cannot do is you can't have someone else's moment, their emotion, nope. what they felt yep. at that time. It's not yours. You can't have it and you can't make it up because it's not going to be authentic if you try to. And so it kind of was like my aha moment. I wrote this big blog posting and it got shared a bunch of times and I was like, this is how I can explain it. And so, you know, in that rare occurrence where someone might say, oh, you know, there's this really specific, like exact photo that I want. I kind of talk about that and say, you know, I am totally open to, you know, understanding what type of inspiration you like, but we're going to, we're going to do a really unique spin on it that fits your story and is going to be even better than those images that you saw that you liked. That is so well said, like about you cannot create that emotion and then that love and just like what that image is capturing. And I mean, still to this day, I have brands they are like, I'm like, did you think of a list? Like, are there specific things we need to know about? Like, not that I'm trying to get a list from them for the photographer, but my gosh, it's like, if there's special family or specific, like you want pictures with your dog or, you know, like I need to know that so I can put it in the timeline. And then my last bride recently, she's like, well, I sent them my Pinterest board. 
<laughs> okay. Well, your family's names are not in those Pinterest pictures, I'm sure. So let's get a little bit more detailed on what you mean by that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it, I'm sure it just drives some photographers crazy. And I think, I mean, I think it's an education thing too, that totally. photographers should be educating you know, the, their couples on what they do and what they need from them. So like we have a questionnaire that we send out about two months before the wedding and it's, we definitely don't work off a shot list or anything like that. But, um, you know, sometimes the wedding planner fills it out as well, but you know, we have times, locations, family members, because the family formals are still really important. That's a pretty timeless thing. You know, what we did them in our wedding, like we almost always do family formals, at least some. Yeah. Um, we need to know who those people are, like you said. And we also need to know, you know, any surprises or first looks or important things that are going to happen. So, you know, if the photographer doesn't do that, they're not going to be prepared to capture all of those things. And so I think that's really, really important. Um, you know, something to look out for when, you know, you're talking, when couples are talking to photographers is like, how does a photographer plan so that they are prepared when all those things are going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. And that, I don't think people really understand when they think they're like, oh, just grab your camera and get it. And it's like, there's so many things to look at. Like I've learned over the years, like there's different types of lens and there's different types of lighting and like, gosh, I've just learned so much. And I'm like, it's just not that easy sometimes guys, mm-hmm. especially like with some of the video people. And it's just, it's nuts. Like the expectations sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you say is like that your clients after the wedding, like what do they most love about you guys? Well, you know what I did is, is, um, I created a, a branding book of kind of what people have said about us. Um, that's awesome because you know, like like that's really what you have to go by. What is, I don't know who the quotes by, but it's basically, you know, you can say that your business is whatever it is, but really your business is what other people say about it. Absolutely. You know? So when I created our branding book, like our brand voice is the words that our clients use to describe our brand. So some of those things are, you know, kind, professional, flexible, exceed expectations, feel like they've gained a new friend. I had one bride who she wrote in her review that I was um, not only a photographer, but also like her maid of honor and best friend. And honestly, that's like the best compliment that, that we could get because not only are we there photographing things, but if they're stressed out, you know, we're kind of talking them off a ledge sometimes, or we're managing family dynamics, or, you know, I've bustled a million dresses. I've pinned on a million boutonnieres. I've stopped, um, centerpieces from being on fire a few times. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So there's beyond like the actual photography part, you know, it's, there's so many things that we do that aren't even related to photography at all. And it all comes back to being kind and doing whatever it takes and working with all of those other wedding professionals involved to create the best experience possible. Yeah. Like, what would you say are like, do you, are there any challenges that you are up against right now? Like with things changing, like with Pinterest and things like that? I feel like there's always challenges, (laughs) right? (laughs) You know, sometimes people, sometimes people are like, oh gosh, you know, you've been doing this for a while now. It must be so easy. Uh -uh. I feel like it always gets more difficult, you know, because especially with photography, the barrier to entry just keeps getting lower and lower. And especially in Florida, people move here all the time. And so, you know, a lot of people are like, Oh, you know, we're just going to get a camera and start shooting weddings. There's tons and tons of weddings that happen. So I think that there is a, a big challenge with couples being able to compare apples to apples and determine who is actually a professional photographer and who isn't, because there is a very big difference between a professional photographer and someone who has a pretty website and is taking photos of people, you know, there's totally. (laughs) So I think that is very challenging because anybody can throw up, you know, a beautiful website with a few great images or have a pretty Instagram feed all the time. That kind of stuff is very easy compared to 
actually photographing weddings and, you know, having a workflow where you are creating these beautiful images as well as serving your clients with albums and being on time and doing contracts and, you know, all these other things involved, that's a lot different than, you know, just portraying yourself as, you know, a photographer and making a living doing it. Like a lot of these what I see here is there's a lot of people who have just started and now they're saying that they're educating other people and that they're, you know, teachers. And I'm like, what, who are you teaching? How is this occurring? But it's all because, you know, what they're doing is social media. And so people aren't, don't really know them and aren't working with them personally. It's all an online persona type of thing. So I think that's really, really challenging both for, you know, professionals like myself who this is what we do and we're very good at it. Um, you know, versus like people who are new and getting out there, like it's very hard for couples to discern who's legit and who's not. I think that's a huge challenge. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like I could just have a whole day (laughs) podcast about like these online people. Um, somebody sent me a website yesterday and they said it, the, the email said something like, Hey, I think this girl is doing something like you. And I looked at it. And um, it was like a few classes, like educational things. Like I specifically talk on technology and productivity. It is not sexy at all, but it freaking makes business sense. <laughs> and mm-hmm. it's, I mean, you, you, if you're going to grow in this day and time in business, like you've got to be up with certain things and protecting your files. And I mean, that could be a whole nother podcast, but it's mm-hmm. just like these people that they've never planned an event in their life. Yeah, but they teach it school or they have these amazing social media um, pages that they have paid for followers and all that. And somebody asked me recently, they're like, so how many followers followers do you have? And I said, honestly, I, I don't know. Like, that's not something that I look at. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, organically, if people find us and we are inspiring them by what we're executing or doing or teaching, that's awesome. Um, but I'm not the girl to go and pay for people to go and like me because I'm busy. And like, it's, it's funny because some of the people that have the largest social following, like they're, that is their business is exactly regularly on social media. And it's like, I'm effing busy. Like, we're, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't have time to post five times a day. So it's just, and then it's like, ask them to, you know, plan or photograph an event or something. And like, they wouldn't even know where to start. It's just, um, it's, yeah, it's very challenging and it is a completely different time where things are just out of control a little bit. So I think those of us who, you know, do know what we're doing that I kind of take it upon myself to say, okay, I want to be an educator and a leader and making sure that people know what they're getting, what they're paying for so that they can feel good about it at the end of the day and at the end of their wedding process. <laughs> yeah, no, I absolutely totally agree with that. And I think, you know, another challenge to that is, you know, when you see these other people with huge followings and things like that, it makes you be like, oh my gosh, what should I be doing? I should be spending my time like building this following and everything too, when that's not necessarily going to get you, you know, the business that you need and connections and referrals and that kind of thing. It might look pretty and the numbers might be big, but you know, in the end, what is going to allow you to work with the people you love to work with? And a lot of times it's not that, you know, so there's a lot of challenges all the time. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, totally. (laughs) But again, it's like at the end of the day, when you love what you do and you love your clients, Um, nothing can replace that social Mm -hmm. media followers at the end of the day, it's still about personal connection and that's what life's about is about personal connection. So, which leads me into the next thing, because I know that you have another passion other than just photography. And I want you to share with our audience about your relatively new podcast and what your passion for behind that podcast, what drops that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like I'm maybe 
missed my calling of, you know, how it's like, Ooh, maybe I should have been a journalist. Like if I, my other dream job would be to be an anchor of the today show. <laughs> because I just think, you know, the people that they get to talk to and tell their stories in words is so awesome. <laughs> so I agree. Yeah. The cool thing is now because of all the, you know, like social media, you know, you can have a voice and talk about things that you're passionate about and it doesn't have to be your job and it's actually pretty easy to do. So, um, my husband and I became foster parents, um, five years ago and I've always wanted to adopt. And so, um, our two girls are adopted both from Tampa locally. They're four months apart, almost twins. And so that's a whole other series of podcasts, but (laughs) Kind of throughout being a foster parent and adopting, I learned that my social passion is helping other families reduce the barriers to them being a foster parent or adopting. Because the, you hear people all the time who are like, oh, we would totally adopt, but it's too expensive. Yep. We don't know how to get started. We already have four kids, you know, blah, 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 blah. The excuses go on and on and on. Yep. And so, you know, if I can do it, I know all of the different resources and ways to get started. So friend Holly and I started a foundation. It's called the Promise Love Foundation. And we do two things. The first is we help families fundraise for adoption. Um, And whether that's, you know, there's all different types of adoption locally, domestic, you know, domestic from the foster system internationally, that kind of thing. So we help reduce the barriers of, financial, um, with adoption, as well as we help people get started in whatever that journey is. So if I talk to a family and they tell me, you know, they're open to older kids and they maybe want to do X, Y, and Z, then I'm going to help them, you know, get started adopting kids from the foster system who need to be adopted. Or some people want to do international or some people want to do private newborn adoption. So those are the two things we do with the Promise Love Foundation and it's, we're local here in Tampa, but you know, we've helped people in different locations are, we are just releasing our newest family that we're helping. And they have actually been working on adopting a little boy from Haiti for the last six years. Wow. Yeah. Their story is very cool. Um, we have our, their video done and we're going to post that. Um, I think I was actually supposed to post it yesterday and I didn't. <laughs> We are busy. <laughs> Reminds me. But so they, um, so it's very cool. They've known this little boy since he was born. His mom died and they've been trying to adopt him since. And um, immigration things have started to come through. So we're coming around partnering with them to raise $40,000 to bring him home from Haiti. So um, it's very grassroots and, you know, um, we just kind of do it. It's not our full-time thing. It's, it's our side gig that we love to do. And then through that, I love talking and podcasting also. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) My friend Karen um, moved back to Tampa recently and her son's adopted as well. And so she's writing a book and she had talked to me about the book and I was like, Hey Karen, why don't we do co-host a podcast on adoption and how it really is in resources and guests and things like that. So we also started a um, podcast called adoption today and we release new episodes every Monday. We have about two or about 10 episodes out right now. Um, and so those are the things that I'm equally as passionate about that aren't work related, you know, to help make the world a better place. That is so awesome. I love that there. I have several friends that, um, you know, have tried and tried to, to have kids and I couldn't agree with you more where I'm like, well, why don't you adopt? Like, I know people that have adopted kids and they're like, but it's just so hard in the process and da, 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 and excuse after excuse after excuse. So I'm definitely going to tell them about your podcast because yeah, they need to listen. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. It's something, it's kind of one of those things that you don't, it's just not readily available information and you have to do a lot of searching to find the truth and find what to do. So we just want to get rid of all that searching and get you straight on the path you need to be on. Yeah, that is awesome. I love that you do that. Well, so where I know that our listeners can go to your website, which is carriewilds.com. It's C-A-R-R-I-E-W-I-L-D-E-S.com. And how do people look at you and follow you? Like, would you say Instagram and Facebook, let us know where all the handles are that we can 
can connect with you. Definitely. Well, the links in our contact info is all on our website, but Facebook and Instagram, well, actually Facebook is at Carrie Wilds and Instagram is at Carrie Wilds Photography. You can find my personal Instagram is at Carrie Wilds. Full disclosure, that's mostly my kids and like funny things, but Aww. you can find me personally on there and then my Twitter is at Carrie Wilds also. That's awesome. Well, Carrie, thank you so much for your time today. I loved having you on Weddings Unveiled. And for all of our listeners out there, thank you so much for listening and have a great day. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list, and if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.